In this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve equations graphically by the intersection method. <clears throat> In a subsequent video, I'll show you how to do it another way by x-intercepts. This is a very, very powerful lesson in that after I show you how to do it, you'll be able to solve any equation that there is out there uh, graphically, even things that you don't know how to solve manually. So if you're taking something like an SAT2 and you see an equation that you don't know how to solve, this could be your ticket out of that situation. So the key concept behind solving equations by intersections is that the solution to an equation is the x-coordinate of the point at which the graph of each side of the equation intersects. Let's start by looking at a very basic example. Let's look at 2x minus 1 equals 5. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation manually, just like it were an Algebra 1 class. I'm going to start by adding 1 to both sides, leaving me with 2x equals 6. Dividing both sides by 2, leaving me with x equals 3. Okay, now we're going to solve the same problem, this time by graphing. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is look at the left-hand side and think about this in the following way. y equals 2x minus 1. And let's think about all we know about this type of function. The first thing that comes to mind is that it resembles y equals mx plus b, which means that it's a linear function. And the y-intercept of this line is going to be at negative 1. And the slope is 2, which means from this plotted point, I can rise 2 and run 1. With these two points, I can draw the line. Now, if I look at the right side of the equation, we're going to think about this as another function, y sub 2 equals 5. And this is a constant function. Again, it's a line, but this time it's a very basic line. It's simply a horizontal line that has a y-intercept at 5. So I'm going to count 5 tick marks up, and I'm going to draw another line. The first question I want to ask myself is, do these two functions intersect? And the answer is yes. They intersect right here. And if I were to actually do this on the graphing calculator, the point at which they would intersect would be when x equals 3. The point of intersection would be 3, 5. And what you want to focus on is not the whole ordered pair, but just the x value. This guy right here reveals the answer. Okay, so I've queued up the graph and calculator, and I'm going to go to the y equals screen at the top, and under y1, I'm going to put in 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1. I'm going to scroll down to y sub 2, and now I'm going to put in y sub 2 equals 5. I want to get a, a basic viewing window, and to do that, I'm going to press zoom, and then option 6, which is the standard viewing window. It's 10 tick marks in each direction from the origin. And it's always a good window to start with. You could always adjust it if necessary after that. But you'll see we have our sloped line here, and we have our constant line here. And you can see that they do intersect. Now the calculator can find this point of intersection for us. So we're going to press second, then trace, and a menu is going to show up. And we're going to pick option five, which says intersect. Now there's going to be three prompts at the bottom of the screen. It's going to say first curve, second curve, and then guess. And what you essentially want to do is have the cursor blinking by the point of intersection for each of these prompts. So you can think of this like a video game, a very, very fun video game, where you need to move the cursor to that point of intersection. Fun, right? And then we're going to press Enter, Enter, and Enter again. And after you've pressed Enter three times, you're going to see the word intersection, and it gives you the ordered pair, 3, 5. And again, while they give us a pair, we only really want to focus on the x. x equals 3 thus confirming our answer that we got when we did it by hand. Now, you're not always going to be able to do these graphs by hand, and that's precisely why this is such a great thing. We can have a, a, an equation that's really crazy looking, something that we don't know anything about, but as long as we have a graph and calculator, there's a good chance that we'll be able to solve it by intersections. Okay, example two is a little bit harder. Once again, we're going to solve it first manually, then we'll do it on the graph, and then we'll do it on the graph and calculator. In number two, we have a, a quadratic equation, and I know that because there is a squared term. And from algebra, I know that to solve a quadratic equation, my first maneuver should be to set it equal to zero. So I'm going to state x squared minus x 
minus 6 equals 0. Now there's a lot of different ways that I can solve a quadratic equation and one of those ways is to solve by factoring and it just so happens that this one is solvable by the factoring technique. So you might have to think back to your algebra class on how to do this but a good place to start would be to look at the constant at the end, negative 6 and identify all pairs of numbers that give you a 6. Those pairs are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Now at the same time that we want a product of 6, we also want the sum to be negative 1. So looking at these pair choices, these options, the 2 and the 3 are going to give me a negative 1 if I make the signs positive 2 and negative 3. This is going to give me the product of negative 6, which I want at the end, and it's going to give me the sum of negative 1 in the middle. So this is going to suggest two factors, x plus 2 and x minus 3. Now I'm going to set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve for x. The first one's going to be x plus 2 equals 0, or x equals negative 2. The second one is going to be x minus 3 equals 0, or x equals 3. So here are our two manual solutions. Now let's do it graphically. So I'm going to focus first on the left-hand side. And I'm going to identify it as y sub 1 is equal to x squared. And when I look at that, I think back to my former algebra class, and I say, well, this is, this is not linear because there's a squared term. This is quadratic. And when I go to y2, y sub 2 is going to equal x plus 6. Now, this happens to be linear. So let's start with the graph of the left side, y equals x squared. Again, it's a quadratic, and this is going to look like a parabola with a vertex at 0, 0. Now, if I plug in 1 or negative 1, it jumps up to 1. So both 1 and negative 1 are sent to 1. If I plug in 2 or negative 2, the output is 4. And with these five points, I think I can sort of get a rough sketch of what this parabola might look like. Okay, now I'm going to graph the line. y equals mx plus b. The y-intercept of this line is 6, so I need two more tick marks. I'm going to find the x-intercept, and to find the x-intercept, I let y equal 0, and then I solve for the resulting x. And if I let y equal 0, I'm going to get x equals negative 6. So the x-intercept is negative 6. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So I'm going to connect these. Now I'm not using a ruler here, so these lines aren't perfect by any means. And what I think I'm going to do is extend this parabola just a little higher. Now, the critical thing here are the points of intersection. And when I look at the green and the purple, I see that they do cross twice. I'll put gigantic dots there to, to indicate that. Now, I don't have graph paper, so it's hard to tell. But just looking at this, if I were to look at this first point on the left and project up from the x-axis, it looks like this is occurring when x equals negative 2. And that's pretty awesome because that's what we have over here. Now the rightmost intersection point happens a little bit farther over than this. And let's project this up. And again, we're just guessing here because I don't have graph paper. This looks like it's about 3, which confirms our other answer. So let's call up the calculator and do it that way and see if that confirms our results. So I've got the calculator queued up. Let's press the Y equals screen to get us to the graphing part of the calculator. And let's start by typing in the left side, Y sub 1 equals X squared. The squared button is down here on the left in the middle. And now let's go down to Y sub 2, and let's put in X plus 6. And I'm going to use that zoom 6 again. Let's see if that's going to be a suitable window. We could always adjust it if necessary. So I'll start with zoom 6, and we should see a parabola and a line. There's the parabola. There's the line. And this window is pretty good. There's really nothing happening on the bottom half of the screen. So I actually could get rid of that and just sort of zero in on where the intersection points are. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to press Window. Right now my Y min is negative 10. But like I said, there's nothing happening down there. So I'm going to change that parameter to negative 2. And maybe I'm going to go up a little higher. I'm going to go up to 12. See how this adjustment affects the window. Yeah, I like this window a lot better. Now I'm focusing really at the points of intersection. So now there are two. So the process that I did in example one, I'm going to have to do twice. Let's commit right now to finding the intersection point on the left. Second, trace, five. 
Then like the video game, I'm going to move the cursor over to the point of intersection on the left, press enter three times, and the first intersection point is when x equals negative 2. So our first answer is confirmed. Let's repeat the process for the point on the right. Second, trace, intersect. Let's move along the curve to the rightmost intersection point, and then we'll press enter three times. And we're getting an intersection point of 3, 9. Again, the 3 being the important part. So x equals 3, thus confirming our second answer. Okay, this is our third and final example of solving an equation graphically by the intersection method. Uh, this particular equation is really kind of challenging. They want us to solve the absolute value of x squared plus x minus 1 equals the square root of x squared minus 1. But believe it or not, this is actually going to be the quickest problem that we're going to solve in the three examples that I've shown you. And the reason is, I can't solve this problem manually. I don't know what the graphs of these functions look like. So we're really just stuck with the calculator and looking at the solution that the calculator gives us. So I'm going to start by clearly defining what the, the left side is, y sub 1. y sub 1 is the absolute value of x squared plus x minus 1 y sub 2 is going to be assigned to the right side. And the right side is the square root of x squared minus 1. So I'm going to sketch these on the graph and calculator, and I'm going to see if there are any intersections, and if so, where they do intersect. So let me queue up the graph and calculator. I'm going to press the y equals button. And for y1, I'm going to put in the absolute value. And, and this is tough to find. You're going to press the math button. Scroll 1 over to the right to num. Select absolute value and then type in x squared plus x minus 1. Scroll down to y sub 2, get the square root, which is second x squared, of x squared minus 1. So we've got both of the functions entered in. I'm going to start with the traditional zoom 6, your standard viewing window, and then we'll tweak it if necessary. Now, like example 2, there's not a whole lot happening at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to just tweak this a little bit and go to my window and make my y min instead of negative 10, I'm going to make it negative 2. I'm going to press graph and see how that's adjusted the window. This is a lot better, but it's still not ideal. So I'm going to show you something else that you might not have known about your calculator. I'm now going to do zoom box. Zoom box allows you to create a new box, and then when you press enter, that becomes your new zoomed in window. Right now, the cursor is blinking at the origin. I'm going to press up. Actually, it wasn't at the origin. It was up a little higher than that, but um, I see the cursor right here. I'm going to scroll to the left. I'm going to press enter, and then I'm going to drag a rectangle at the bottom, towards the bottom, over to the right. This rectangle right here is going to capture any intersections that I'm seeing, but it's just going to zoom it in so I can see them more clearly. When I press enter, this zoomed in screen will occur. Zoom box is a great feature, and it's not something that I started using until pretty recently. So when I look, I see that there are two intersections over here on the left, and that there's really nothing happening over here on the right. Although when I was zoomed out, it looked like there might have been something, but now that I see more clearly, I know that there's not. So let's commit to finding the answer all the way to the left. Second, trace option 5. Move the cursor way over to that leftmost intersection. And then press enter three times. One, two, three. Now my first observation is that this answer is not a whole number. And that's OK. Not every answer in math is a whole number. But for our class, we're going to be rounding to the nearest hundredth. So in case number one, x is equal to negative 2.33. Now let's go to the second intersection, which is the one that's closer on the right. Second trace 5 again. Let's move to the other side. Right there. Enter, enter, enter. The second intersection, if rounding to the nearest hundredth, is negative 1.23. So I hope you realize the power in these few examples that I've given you. You're now able to solve almost any equation out there, whether you can do it manually or not.